What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by. And today, we are going to be taking a look at the five best legendary hand cannons within Destiny 2 to be using when the Beyond Light expansion launches. And so, let's get started. But just before we do, I had a terrible sleep last night. And the only thing that's getting me through this video is a nice glass of advanced GG the only clinically proven gaming supplement out there. So check the link in the description down below. Use code KHD for 10% off. All right, now what exactly do I mean when I say hand cannons to use when Beyond Light launches? Well, quite simply, all five of these hand cannons are not sunsetting next season, in that their maximum infusion caps will survive beyond light. You can feel safe getting one of these weapons, and you can infuse it all the way up to the max power level for beyond light and use it in the raid, for example. A lot of other hand cannons are getting sunset, and they will not be able to be utilized within Light Matters PvP activities, like Iron Banner and Trials, and of course, whatever the endgame PvE activities are as well. So, with that explanation, let's start here at number 5. And we have the Aikilos underscore HC underscore V1-0-2, otherwise known as the Aikilos Hand Cannon. Now, this is a pretty darn powerful weapon. It is acquirable through farming the Prophecy Dungeon. It drops from the first encounter, which means you can literally do the first encounter over and over and over again to farm for a good roll of this weapon. Now, it belongs to the 180 rounds per minute archetype, which frankly is not not great in either PvE or PvP. In PvE, it's still serviceable. It still has access to some very good roles. I'm thinking triple tap or subsistence combined with rampage. It also has the very powerful and unique Seraph rounds perk, which means that the bullets can shoot through objects and they bounce off hard surfaces. It's basically ricochet rounds and armor piercing rounds combined into one. But also, importantly, this counts as a Warmind weapon, which means that it will trigger all of your Warmind perks and spawn Warmind cells, which are very powerful. And for that reason alone, it's worth taking a look at, and that's why it falls in our number five slot. As for a PvP role, again, this archetype isn't great, but something like Seraph Rounds with Threat Detector and Rampage would be decent. Moving on from there, we have the number four slot, and this goes to the Jack Queen King 3. And don't worry, this is the only weapon on our list that you cannot currently farm for, but if you got one in the vault, you're in luck, because this is truly a fantastic weapon. It belongs to the extremely popular and arguably the best damage archetype, especially for PvP, the 150 RPM archetype. Now, the perks are really where this weapon shines. It actually can get Demolitionist in the first perk slot. This was something that Bungie was experimenting with when Season of Dawn launched, and all the weapons that have access to that are just very, very powerful because Demolitionist is a very, very good perk, and the fact that you can get it plus Swashbuckler, for example, is absolutely insane. So you're getting your grenade back faster, you can throw a grenade and instantly refill the magazine, all while also getting a damage bonus perk again like Swashbuckler. Truly an incredible weapon. Now as for PvP, the archetype is certainly top tier, but the perks not so much. However, this can get the very interesting spawn of high impact reserves on a hand cannon that is extremely rare. This makes the rounds at the end of the magazine deal more damage, so you can actually get some pretty cheeky kills from some pretty insane ranges when you are triggering that perk with the Jack Queen King in PvP. And the increase of damage means that you can mix in body shots and still get a 3 shot kill, which also matters quite a bit. However, it's time to move on to our number 3 slot, and that goes 
to the ancient gospel. Now, this comes from the Garden of Salvation raid. Although it's an older activity, all of the loot from it are dropping with an infusion cap as if they dropped from literally this current season, season of arrival. So this will last a very, very long time. And I would say it's kind of tied with the Nation of Beasts from Last Wish Raid, which also has the same infusion cap. The thing about this weapon is yes, it's a little bit hard to farm. It is a raid weapon. But if you get one, you have a pretty good chance to get a good roll. And that's because the perk pool for this weapon is absolutely insane. There's only four perks in the first and second perk tiers, which means that you don't have a lot of chaff thrown in, you just have good stuff. In that first perk tier, you can get rapid hit or outlaw, increasing your reload speed very easily. Then in that second perk tier, you can get kill clip or swashbuckler as damage boosting perks. You can also get dragonfly, which is quite good as well and rangefinder for PVP. So you just can't go wrong with this weapon. Also, it has a 100 recoil stat, so it recoils directly up. It's genuinely one of the easiest hand cannons to use in the entire game. I've always said that if you don't like hand cannons, this is the one to change your mind just because it's so user friendly and there's just nothing about it, nothing that's bad. Like it's just good on pretty much every category. Now, is it the best? No, especially it's 140 RPM archetype. That just isn't as good as the 150s, especially in PVP, but in PVE, it's perfectly serviceable. Now, as for a PVP roll, you can go with the classic uh, rapid hit or outlaw plus kill clip combo. That's going to be decent. Or you can go for the slide shot plus range finder maximum range roll. And that's going to be pretty serviceable as well. Again, it's just going to be a little bit worse than that 150 archetype. But it is time to move on from there to our number two slot. And that goes to, honestly, what is my personal favorite, the Old Fashioned. Now, my Old Fashioned, boy, it has seen a lot of play. This is my preferred primary weapon for end game level content, specifically Grandmasters. So, this also comes from Season of Dawn, however, it's still dropping within the world loot pool, so you can just randomly get it from the Gunsmith and Random Legendary Engrams, for example. And, like the Jack Queen King, this can get Demolitionist in that first perk slot, which is super important, and you can combine it with what I have, Explosive Payload. Now, I think this combo is one of arguably the best legendary hand cannon for PvE. It's just so versatile, so good. Explosive payload lets you extend the range massively because essentially part of the damage is converted into explosive damage. That explosive damage has no range drop off. So I have like two tapped acolytes from a mile away, like literally across the map. Other hand cannons would take five shots to kill, not with explosive payload. And then you also have Demolitionist, which has proven itself to be an extremely valuable end game perk just because of how good grenades are, especially when you have the Oppressive Darkness mod in the mix and the Armaments mods in the mix. So getting your grenade back faster is incredibly important. But this isn't the only good roll. It can get Demolitionist Kill Clip or Demolitionist and Surrounded as well. Now as for PvP, one of the more interesting spawns is that it can actually get firmly planted in the first perk slot, which increases your accuracy and stability and handling quite a bit when you crouch, so it'll become a laser beam for doing so, but most commonly it can actually get quick draw plus snapshot sights along with some range increasing uh, perks to just make this a really snappy agile weapon. But it is time to move on to our number one slot, and that goes, it's gotta go, to the Dire Promise. This 
came from Season of the Worthy. It's another random world drop uh, weapon, and so you can get it from just spamming gunsmith materials or opening legendary engrams. And this is an absolutely cracked weapon for both PvP and PvE. It's quite literally top tier for every aspect of the game, and that's because of its incredible perk combinations. So, the role I have here is quite good, but unfortunately isn't a god roll in either PvP or PvE. I'm still farming for this dang thing, but seriously, for PvE, what it can get is in that first slot, Overflow, where picking up special or heavy ammo reloads the magazine instantly and overfills the magazine. So you're gonna have a hand cannon with over 20 rounds in a magazine. That is absolutely incredible for PvE and you get to combine it with the damage increasing perk of Swashbuckler, which I think overall is the best for general play. It's gonna be good in end game play. It's gonna be good absolutely everywhere. Now, you can go for something like Osmosis to make it just a Nightfall All-Star, but Swashbuckler, again, generally is better. And if that wasn't good enough, like that would be an absolutely incredible PvE role, not to mention it's again part of that 150 archetype, arguably the best, but then you have the PvP side of things where the Dire Promise also just destroys. Because it can actually spawn with opening shot, which improves the accuracy and range of the opening shot of an attack and range finder to just increase the range. Now the thing is, with hand cannons, the actual range stat does almost nothing. The difference between no range and max range stat is a few meters. But the range increasing perks, like rangefinder, make a lot more of a difference. So the fact that this can get a decent range stat combined with two range increasing perks means this is arguably the best PvP hand cannon in the entire game. Definitely worth farming for. This is really something to look out for. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.